And here is the man who wrote it. It is Mr. Alistair McGrath. Nice to see you. Nice to be here. Arthur. The, uh... Oh, look. Look, it's, it's Darwin and God. <laughs> and the people... The, uh, you were a staunch atheist at one point. And then you changed, right? Yeah, I, I used to be a real atheist when I was young. Um, and the different kinds of atheists. There's a really nice atheist who says, look, I don't believe in God, but I'm so glad you do. Yeah. But I was very much, you know, if you believe in God, you're mad or you're bad or you're sad. So I was the yeah. kind of aggressive sort, <laughs> kind of Rottweiler sort. And, and what, what happened? What happened? Well, I went to the university and I started thinking for myself a bit more and I discovered that actually, really, God was rather more exciting than I thought. And so I eventually became a Christian. So Dawkins has gone one way, I've gone another way. It's very interesting. What do you mean when you say you started thinking for yourself? It, like, it, when you were an atheist, you were not thinking for yourself? Well, I, think, I think I was buying into this, this sort of idea, look, you know, science disproves God, religion leads to violence. And I, I think I just accepted that without thinking about it. It just seemed to make sense. But then when I went to university, I kind of said, look, I've got to think about this. And mm -hmm. It suddenly became much more complicated, much more interesting too, but really complicated. There are a lot of people who feel that science and religion, it's not like they're polar ends of the same spectrum, they're just incompatible. It's like comparing a car to a house, religion and science, but you, you find a way to reconcile them. Yeah, well, I used to think that too. And then I began to realize that actually if you do believe in God, it kind of gives a new intellectual depth to your science. It really makes it more interesting, more engaging. And I began to realize that actually if you believe in God, it, it gives you reasons to look at science in much more detail but also brings more excitement, more, more depth to your science. So give me an example of the excitement and the depth. Well, you know, what, if, if, you're, if you say you're a Christian, okay, you'll say, well, God made this stuff. So you, you look at that and you say, hey, you know, the more I appreciate the beauty of nature, I appreciate the beauty of God. So studying nature is all about gaining, you know, a, a deeper appreciation of, of God. Didn't God just say, let there be light? Like, he just, he said it and it was there? Well, I mean, he may have done this in a more complicated way than that, but the key point is, in some way, you look at the beauty of nature, and that reflects the beauty of God. So it gives you an idea that God must be, you know, really quite interesting. Hey, you know, on our show, because we, obviously so many people are, have some sort of faith in their mm -hmm. life, and, we, and it's something that's very interesting to us, and we've had people on, you know, the, Dawkins was on our yeah. show last week, you sure. know, you, you're on this show now, a lot of different people, and when it comes to people of faith, explaining, trying to discount science, or, or explain science through God, it's generally very unsatisfying because they sort of hit the wall in terms of how do you, you know, like science is, seems to have over the years done a pretty good job of explaining a lot. It doesn't explain everything, but it certainly has explained a lot more. And, and can you be a Christian and, and believe in evolution? Can you believe in, you know, a big bang? Does it have to be, like, can, can you do both? Yes. Yes, you can. And for me, you know, science is very, very good at answering lots of questions, but as you're saying, not all questions. So, you know, if you say to me, well, you know, um, let's talk about how the universe came into existence, well, we can talk about that scientifically. Mm -hmm. But we start talking about another question, you know, like, what's the point of life, or why are we here? That's a different kind of question. I don't think science answers that, but I think there are answers that we can find. What questions does, does religion answer that God does, that science does not answer? Well, here's an obvious question. Do you matter? Are you important? Are you significant? You know, and that's a very important question. And uh, if I was speaking from a Christian perspective, I would say you matter profoundly to God, mm -hmm. that he cares about you. Now, these, these are very important issues. I mean, I don't think science answers those, but we're always going to be asking these big questions. You know, do we really matter? And the answer is yes, we do. That, that sounds more like philosophy to me than science. Well, philosophy is trying to say, look, let's, let's try and ask the big questions of life. Mm -hmm. And sure, science can answer some of these, like what's the structure of water? But these deeper questions, you know, why are you here? What's life all about? I don't think science answers those, but there are answers, and you and I can really have a good go at discovering them. You, you mean, uh, right now you've got two books out that have gone after Dawkins and his ideas. Uh, yeah. mm -hmm. Dawkins. Why, why Dawkins? Well, because uh, Dawkins has, you know, really raised some very big questions, and he's, he said some things that I think got a very good debate going. So it's very important to be part of that discussion. And so both my books are really trying to take this discussion further. Can I uh, read a quote from you? You might have already heard this. Uh, this is from Dawkins towards you, and I know that you, you, you and him have debated before. Yeah. Right? And here's what he said. Because uh, you called him grumpy, didn't you? Did yeah. you say he was the grumpy atheist? I did. You called him grumpy atheist. <laughs> His response to you calling him the grumpy atheist was, quote, Alistair McGrath has now published two books with my name in the title. If I seem grumpy, could it be because a professor of theology is building a career riding on my back? It is tempting to quote Yeats, was there ever a dog that praised his fleas? <laughs> which sounds like a, a hip-hop battle between the two of you, uh, which is what's going on. It, what, 
that that you called him that he calls you this is this is this helping the discussion along no I, I, well, it makes it more interesting you know uh, it stops being dull and academic but I think that there are real issues here and, and certainly Dawkins and I do take very very different perspectives I respect his faith mm -hmm. I used to be there myself one day but I've moved on now to a different position and really what I want to say to him is you know I can understand where you're coming from but I I do think he overstates and I also think he's just a little bit disrespectful to people of faith because they're not mad or bad that they're thought this through, I think we've just got to be a bit more respectful in this discussion. It seems for a lot of people, certainly in our world today, religion and violence on a global scale are completely connected. Yeah, I think that's a real issue and certainly it's a real challenge to people of faith to, to, to realize that this sort of thing is happening. But I want to come back and say I don't think it's that straightforward. I mean, you think of the 20th century, you think of the Soviet Union. Um, Lenin and Stalin tried to eliminate religion. They had to use force. Lenin talks about using the protracted use of violence. It's a ghastly phrase. I think the real situation is any worldview, whether it's atheist or religious, can lead to violence. People say this matters so so much that we, we throw the rule book away to get what we want. And I think in this complex world that we live in, we've really got to learn to live with each other. And I want to say to people of faith, you know, you calm down. But I also want to say to, to our critics, look, maybe, maybe you've got problems as well. Maybe we all need to try and be more well, reasonable about this. Well, how, how, I mean, how are you received in the evangelical community? Because it is the Christians who elected a Christian leader who is an evangelical who's doing God's do. God told him to go into, you know, to do this stuff. Like, God's making him have war according to him and religious believers. So how are you re received in the evangelical community when those are the Christians who are doing what they think God wants them to do? Well, I, I don't know George Bush personally. Yeah. Uh, if I would have a conversation with him, I'd want to say something like this. How would like you this. advise him? I, I would say, George, are you sure that's what God <laughs> say? Yeah. I mean, um, I mean, I, I mean, isn't Jesus really quite against violence? So I would say there's, there's just a few pointers there that might, might, might be significant in this discussion. <laughs> are you a creationist? No. You're an evolutionist. Yes. And, you know, for the, the people in my life who are full-on Christians, they, I, I try to ask them the same question, and they're like, they're creationists. And, and I said, well, can mm. you do both? And they, no, you can't do both. How do you explain being able to do both? Well, for me, um, the, the evolution makes more sense scientifically of things than anything else. I mean, maybe in 100 years' time, we'll have to change our mind on that. But certainly for the moment, that seems the best way of doing it. Mm -hmm. But for Christians, you know, the key thing is going to be how you interpret the Bible. There are so many different ways of making sense of the Bible. And certainly saying that the Bible talks about God bringing things into existence over a long period of time actually does make a lot of sense. There's an ongoing discussion within Christianity about this. I'm at one end of the discussion. There'll mm -hmm. be others at the other end. But the the important thing is to have a sensible discussion about this. Right. So you're not a biblical literalist? No, then. Not, not at that point, certainly, no. Atheism has always been around, but you're starting to see authors putting out books now. That yeah. it, it, yeah. Is there a renaissance of well, atheism? That, that's a great question. Why, why, is it, why is it so more aggressive? I mean, you yeah. read books like Richard Dawkins or others, and they're, they, they're really in your face. It's, it's, a, it's not sort of, um, here's a nice kind of atheism, much more, you know, let's, let's, let's get rid of religion. So yeah. I'd love to know why there's this, this new energy in atheism. I think it's probably because because I, I think for the first time in a long time, the atheists are now taking the, they're taking a page from the playbook of the fundamentalist faith-based leaders. They're, they're acting like Islamic fundamentalists, they're acting like Christian fundamentalists, and they're just doing the same thing. Well, I think you're right. I think we're seeing almost like atheist fundamentalism. I don't like it very much. I, I prefer the, the, the sort of more gracious stuff. But certainly, I think we're seeing a much more aggressive, hard-nosed atheism, which really is, is taking no prisoners. I, I don't like it very much. Please come back again. Thank you very much. Thank you. Alistair McGrath, everybody. All right, lots more to come on tonight's edition of The Hour. And I'm sure you'll want to send your emails as well to The Hour at cbc.ca. We'll be right back. Thank you.